Here, let's do an example uh, utilizing rotational energy. Um, I'm going to have an incline, and I'm going to have a solid disk start at a height h and roll down the incline. And I want to know what is its uh, translational speed. What is the center of mass speed when it reaches the bottom? So you recall if in before we looked at sort of frictionless surfaces for this sort of problem, we conserved energy, had some frictionless objects slide down to uh, the bottom from some height h. We remember that mgh it had some potential energy equal to one half uh, mv squared and so we could find the final velocity. Well now for a rotational object uh, what is going to be the final energy when it reaches the bottom? Okay, but so again we want to conserve energy. Um, are there non-conservative forces on this problem? There, there certainly are. Um, there's the normal force but it's always perpendicular to the motion. There's also static friction which is causing the rolling which is Right, which is a cause of the rolling, but that friction does not, without slipping, that friction does no uh, work on the system, sort of in the ideal rotation case. There's no uh, movement between the surfaces, so the friction is not doing work on the object. So we can uh, uh, conserve energy. So if we want to conserve energy, then <clears throat> we there's some initial energy, and what is that energy? Well, okay, so it's gravitational potential. Let's establish our coordinate system. We're going to have a zero here at the, at the, well, well, let's put the zero here, sorry. Let's put the zero here where, um, I'm going to clear this off a little bit. The zero of our coordinate system is going to be at where the center of mass of the object is uh, when it reaches the ground. This is the zero of our coordinate system. We're all, I'm also going to say my zero of potential energy is always at that point as well. We have to identify both. Uh, in this case, my potential energy function then just reduces to mgx, if this is the positive x direction. x is then the height above the zero of my coordinate system, which I've defined to be here. So, given this setup and this functional form of my potential energy function, my initial potential energy when the ball is released is mg, the height that it is above the coordinate system that I've decided here, which is h, mgh. Okay, so what is our final energy? Well, it has some kinetic energy of translation, which is one-half mv, center of mass squared, but it also has kinetic energy of rotation when it reaches the bottom. So that kinetic energy of rotation, then, is one-half i omega squared. And so this is kinetic energy of translation. This is kinetic energy of rotation. So our statement of conservation of energy says that uh, our initial energy, which was mgh, and it has no potential energy at, at the at the at the uh, the end. We've set that to be our zero of potential energy. Then is equal to one half mv, the center of mass squared, plus one half i uh, omega squared. So we know i for a solid disk is one half m times the radius squared. We also know that omega is equal to v uh, tangent, that when v sub t is a tangential velocity of a point at the edge of the rotating object divided by the radius of the object. Okay. We also know that it, when rolling without slipping on a smooth surface, on a flat surface, which is, that's what we're assuming, the tangential velocity of a point of the rotating object at the edge is equal to the center of mass velocity. So all of those 
points that we utilized already, the whole rolling without slipping condition, all of that comes into play here to be able to relate the angular velocity of the rotating object with the center of mass velocity when it reaches the bottom. Okay, so given those relationships, we can substitute that in and we get mgh is one half mv center of mass squared plus one half moment of inertia one half mr squared times velocity of the center of mass uh, over r squared and so take that bring the squares inside squares inside and um, and so now the r squares cancel and we get one half mv center of mass squared plus one quarter mass v center of mass squared and this is equal to then three-fourths mass times the velocity of the center of mass squared. Okay, so if this is equal to mgh then well the m's cancel and we get we can solve for v which is the square root of four-thirds gh. Now compare this, this is less to less than the square root of 2gh, which is what the velocity would have been for an object just sliding frictionlessly. And so uh, what's going on there? And, and what's happened can be seen you know, from here. So we had some initial potential energy, but instead of going slim, simply into translational energy, which was the case for an object that was sliding frictionlessly, you now have the energy being divided into both translational and rotational motion. So it's translation with less translational energy, its velocity of the center of mass when it reaches the bottom is lower. We can calculate the amount of kinetic energy that goes into both parts. So what fraction of the translational kinetic energy is there? So let's look at the, the ratio of the translational kinetic energy over the total kinetic energy. So this is one half uh, mv center of mass squared, that's the translational kinetic energy. The total kinetic energy was just mgh, right? That's the, that's the energy that we started with. Okay, if we, we calculate this ratio, we get one half, uh, the m's cancel, um, velocity of the center of mass squared is then uh, four-thirds gh divided by then gh, so the gh is cancel, and we get uh, two-thirds. So two-thirds of the original energy is in translational motion. So the rotate the fraction that is in our rotational motion, well, it it better be one third. But let's go ahead and, and calculate it. See that uh, um, that's what happens. Well, we get that's right. We we've got this, which is just one quarter mv center mass squared over mgh, which is just one half the original one half of of two thirds is going to be one third. These cancel. We'll get one quarter. 4 thirds gh over gh, those cancel in 1 third, right. And so, so you can see that the original uh, potential energy, which was mgh, was divided, 2 thirds go, went into uh, translational, 1 third into rotational kinetic energy uh, by the time the cylinder reached the bottom.